Breaking news, and within minutes of the first wartime government shutdown in American history, Democrats and Republicans announced a last-minute deal on this year's federal budget, which must bring great relief to the 800,000 federal workers and millions of military families around the world whose paychecks were hanging in the balance. The two sides reportedly agreed on a $38.5 billion spending cut for the rest of this year. That's a historic number, but still a tiny sliver of the total budget. It was a day of fraught negotiations with plenty of blame flinging thrown in, but in the end, a stopgap measure was passed before midnight deadline, and we heard this from the key players in this fight. Uh, I'm pleased that uh, Senator Reid and I in the White House have been able to come to an agreement uh, that will, in fact, uh, cut spending and keep our government open. And I expect uh, that the House uh, will vote uh, yet tonight, tonight on a short-term continuing resolution uh, into next week to allow for time for this uh, agreement to, to be uh, put together in legislative form uh, and brought to the floor of the House and Senate for a vote. We have agreed to a historic amount of cuts for the remainder of this fiscal year, as well as short-term bridge that will give us time to avoid a shutdown while we get the agreement through both houses and to the president. We will cut. Today, Americans of different beliefs came together again. In the final hours before our government would have been forced to shut down, leaders in both parties reached an agreement that will allow our small businesses to get the loans they need, our families to get the mortgages they applied for, and hundreds of thousands of Americans to show up at work and take home their paychecks on time, including our brave men and women in uniform. Some of the cuts we agreed to will be painful. Programs people rely on will be cut back. Needed infrastructure projects will be delayed. And I would not have made these cuts in better circumstances. But beginning to live within our means is the only way to protect those investments that will help America compete for new jobs. Investments in our kids' education and student loans, in clean energy and life-saving medical research. We protected the investments we need to win the future. We'll take you to Capitol Hill where the voice votes are going on even at this hour, but we want to start with our chief White House correspondent, Jake Tapper. Uh, long night, maybe I'm projecting, I, I thought I saw some exhaustion on the faces of those three men there. Jake, what was the president's involvement? We saw his meetings yesterday uh, into the evening with the two leaders. Uh, how was he engaged tonight? Uh, well, he was engaged the way he's been engaged uh, throughout much of this process, especially this last week, letting uh, the people who are in charge of the negotiations do the work and then stepping in uh, when he needed to. He had two meetings uh, with the congressional leaders on Thursday, two on Wednesday. And then today uh, there was a, a, an issue of uh, Speaker Boehner trying to get more, trying to push the White House as much as he could, President Obama pushing back on him, saying this is as far as we can go, uh, $38.5 billion in new cuts. That's uh, $78.5 billion in cuts compared to what President Obama proposed in his budget a year ago. It's quite a bit. President Obama also drawing the line, refusing uh, to allow this rider, this controversial uh, policy provision, banning all funding uh, for Planned Parenthood. That is not part of this deal, although there are some uh, other provisions dealing with abortion and Planned Parenthood going forward. Uh, politically, does he take any victory in this tonight? Do, do either side walk away with this feeling uh, dominant? I don't, th I don't think it's a, it's a matter of dominance so much as it is an avoidance uh, of, of looking weak and impotent. I don't think anybody uh, really is going to look, although I should say anybody here at the White House is going to look uh, as though they were really strong in this. Uh, but, but the flip side of it, which would have been much, much worse, it would have been President Obama unable to make Washington work. Uh, and it would have been a government shutdown that he would have taken some of the heat for as well. I do think uh, that Speaker Boehner, when the smoke has cleared, he did, uh, the Republicans did uh, get a lot out of this deal. $78.5 billion in spending cuts compared to President Obama's uh, original budget, $38.5 billion uh, compared to how spending is right now. That is a lot. Uh, and there are some other provisions. There is a, a rider uh, that would ban uh, taxpayer funding of abortions in Washington, D.C. And there will be votes on repealing the health care law uh, and on uh, cutting off funding for Planned Parenthood. Those are 
big achievements for the Republicans. Okay, Jake, well, let's go now to uh, your colleague and mine, John Carl, our man on Capitol Hill, uh, where uh, the votes were still going on. Uh, let's talk about this Planned Parenthood rider. How much of a sticking point was that? Was that uh, the Republicans uh, playing tough poker, or, or, or were they really committed to getting that through? Well, it's a big priority for Republicans. Republicans hate the idea that Planned Parenthood gets more than $300 million a year in federal money. Even though none of that money actually goes to abortion, they don't like the fact that it goes to an organization that provides abortion, and they don't trust that the money is not fungible. So it is a big issue. But about this, Speaker Boehner said, Bill, over and over again, publicly, and I am told privately, that this was all about the money. This was all about the spending. He wanted to push this as far as he could to get the biggest number he could get. And he got a pretty big number. He certainly got a lot more than the Democrats were originally offering. And what does it say that we came within literally minutes of a federal government shutdown <laughs> over what is less than about 0.2% of the total national debt, especially for these big debates going forward. Oh, well, it tells you we're in for a big mess, Bill. I mean, this is nothing compared to the battles that we have coming ahead over big issues. I mean, we saw Paul Ryan come out with a, with, with a budget. He's the, the Republican budget chairman in the House. He came out with a budget for 2012 and beyond, looking at cuts in the trillions. So stay tuned. All right, John Carl, Jake Tapper, our thanks to both you gentlemen.